every single human has abdominal muscles, except for people that are involved in tragic accidents or something like that. And almost always and almost everywhere, the reason you can't see yours is because your layer of fat on top of them is too much. And there's this term from bodybuilding that's really great. It's abs are made in the kitchen, not the weight room and not on the cardio machine. And it's fucking true. If you just impose a caloric deficit through moderate activity, good resistance training, you can train your abs or you cannot. It doesn't really matter. And your body fat winnows down to a small amount. You're going to have whatever kind of abs you have shaped down there. Many people have six packs. Some even have eight packs. I have like a two and a half pack or some shit like that. No oh, God. But. It's almost all that calorie deficit, just straight up getting lean. I would love to dispel a mega myth. People who have a high level of body fat, who want to find out how to do some exercise or eat some food that's going to give them abs, they ain't none for you. It doesn't exist. It's just the layer of fat that's keeping us from seeing your abs. Now, if you do get lean enough, and find that instead of those like, you know, like hunk romance novel abs where the woman's like grading her face on the guy's abs and he is like a unicorn or whatever. I don't read too many romance novels. You've been featured on a few covers, haven't you? Yeah. Mm. Against your will. I'm still in a copyright dispute. Nasty legal battle. You may find that instead of having those ravioli abs, you have just kind of like semblance of abs, but they're real flat. The cool thing about that is you have a really small waist which is sweet, aesthetically, universally considered attractive, near universally. There's a community of gay folks that are in the hairy bear culture that if you have a gut with abs, you're the fuck. Now we're talking yes. about your market. Yes, yes. Bow to your leader, folks. <laughs> when I grow my hair out, I can't go around the gay club because I just get oops, just pulled in. Yep. In any case, um, it's cool. It's a cool look to have just kind of like shh, no crazy, crazy abs. But some people are like, damn it, I wanted abs, abs. For those folks, training abs works exactly the same way as any other hypertrophy training. We covered that in the last video. Two to four times a week training, multiple sets, close to failure, full range of motion, big stretch, increasing loads and reps over time, the same. The planks, the supermans, all that bullshit, the twists. It does stuff, but if you want big abs, you just go about it like you would get big calves, big forearms, big shoulders, big anything. Consistent resistance training. That's the way to get it. And then don't just train abs during your fat loss plan. If in a year from now you want thick abs, start training them now. The last 12 weeks of that year, you're going to diet away the fat. Then your abs will be eaten good. They'll get real thick and then they're going to reveal themselves as meaty. But if you just train abs during the fat loss phase, mm. they'll grow a little bit because they're new to the shit, but it's not going to be super impressive. Does training abs make them more visible at higher body fat percentages? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That seems good. That seems like a reason to train them. If you're interested in being at a high body fat percentage. Well, a higher body fat percentage. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm being a dick. Totally. Um, but it also gives you like more of a pooch kind of look, which you may or may not be into. Um, it's a concern for folks that are, in no offense meant, on kind of the smaller side of things. For them, maybe that's a cool thing. For folks that train with weights at your level, below your level quite a bit through your level and above, the compound exercises and uh, kind of stuff mm. makes your abs so goddamn big to begin with. It's like a, a drop in the puddle for extra ab training. Like right now I have ravioli abs. I have abs right now. If I'm relaxed and I have like, I just genetically have like a gut. My gut has fucking abs. I have a six pack when I'm relaxed now with the veins in it. Mm. And so people are like, what do you do for abs? I'm like, I don't train abs. They're like, Why you don't. Not? No, absolutely not. When I transition away from bodybuilding in a few years to try and become really, really good at jujitsu, good for my purposes, not anyone else's. I suck in general. I'm going to start training abs, not for the purpose of having abs, but for the purpose of developing a much stronger anterior chain, the ability to do this because in jujitsu, that's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm going to be training abs. But for now, abs are just a waste of time for me hmm. because they're absolutely big enough for contest bodybuilding, which is my current pursuit. And I would just be wasting literal time and recovery well, suppose, energy on training I, abs. I, I suppose just to try and sort of speak to the lay person, you are, you've got what, four shows this year? Four or five shows? Something? The plan is to do about four shows. Okay. So you have four individual days this year 
with which you're going to be very, very lean and your abs will be displayed unbelievably well given the low level of body fat. I'm going to guess that most people like the idea. I, I know that for most of my 20s, what I wanted was to have abs. Mm. Right? I didn't care about being lean. I don't hold that much weight in my face. I look sort of relatively lean in my arms in any case, so it didn't really matter. So I wanted abs. So if training abs allows me to have abs, visible abs, at a slightly higher body fat percentage, I achieve my leanness goal, which was visible abs, without having to diet myself down quite so hard. Brilliant. I'm going to say right now, first of all, that works, and I encourage people to do it. Second of all, they should do it conventional resistance training approaches. Uh, exercises that work, full range of motion, lengthened uh, exercises. For example, one of the best ab exercises, and there's tons of them, is the ab wheel, the rollout fucking brutal and it really tenses your abs at long lengths which grows them like crazy isometric work for the abs generally isn't that great mm -hmm. so i would say if you want that train abs train them two to four times a week essentially train them right don't train them as a special group because people say about like how do i get my biceps bigger if I was going, uh -huh. like how do i get my abs bigger like same shit motherfucker but lastly what i would say is the effect on how visible your abs are versus your body fat is very small mm. so you're not going to see your abs at 22% body fat and give a shit how big they are. Realistically, you just don't get that big. Mm. One, two, maybe 3% body fat difference. Could there be a visual difference there? Yeah, potentially, but you need years of training your abs to get to that kind of look. Understood. It's the first time that I've trained as consistently as I have over the last, so far this year, like five months, um, and not done any direct ab work and also not to be honest, been tracking calories all that much, although I've been on like a hardcore fucking FODMAP SIBO thing. So that's kind of just been built in. Auto diet. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Just boring diet. Uh, but for the, f I always presumed that um, lower ab vascularity, like waistband vascularity, was something that came about due to the dieting that I was doing and the ab work that I was mm -hmm. doing. So like, I'm adamant that that's the case. Right now, I've got a shit ton of lower ab vascularity. And I'm like, I'm not dieting that hard. My weight's dropped a little bit, but it's not dropped that much. Where the fuck is this coming from? And I was like, oh, I've been training legs like very aggressively mm. with quite amount, quite a long uh, eccentric pause on everything for five months. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that kind of shows, at least as an N of one, sure. what you were saying. You're bearing down to mm -hmm. keep the intra-abdominal pressure. That's a lot of ab work right there. And it adds up. Any one squat or set of squats is not that much ab work. It's an isometric. It's like a Superman hold. It's kind of a fucking waste of time. But if you do that bracing for almost every exercise, five times that you go to the gym, you're training your abs for like five hours every week. That adds up.